Welcome, everyone. Uh, today is a um, thesis proposal defense by um, one of our students, Andrew Wen. Um, and um, uh, Andrew is a master's student in the what is now called Health and Clinical Informatics track. Um, he's also in the uh, OHSU PSU 3 plus 2 program, so he's simultaneously getting a bachelor's degree in computer science at Portland State. Um, he's interested in natural language processing, as are his committee members, uh, the two Stevens and myself, um, and um, also performance optimization of software applications. So he's uh, mostly been working with his uh, primary advisor, uh, Dr. Wu, um, on NLP-based layered language implementation of clinical text search, which is funded by a grant from the National Library of Medicine. So he will give a presentation uh, defending his proposal, and then we can ask questions of him, and if the committee is satisfied, he can then move on to the next step, which is performing his master's thesis. Uh, uh, yeah. One of the committee members. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, great. Okay, well, okay, there's four committee members, including uh, Dr. Totten. been a great amount of effort being made towards storing medical records in electronic form. Uh, this has unlocked the possibility for computational processing of these medical records, uh, applications of which range from such things as research, for instance, corpus identification, uh, big data, to practical applications such as uh, clinical decision support. But in order to do these things, uh, software must first be able to derive meaning from text itself. Uh, because if you just pass it a raw, raw text, unstructured text, it doesn't understand. It's just a string of characters. Software can't understand that. Um, so the field of research uh, attempting to solve this problem is natural language processing, where uh, we attempt to generate semantic structures from text. And recently, there's been efforts being made towards implementing natural language processing for the clinical domain, so tailoring natural language processing to be able to extract clinical information. Uh, there's been great progress made in this, but there are still several uh, items in clinical text that aren't extracted, and we seek to fill, fill one of these holes. So the purpose of this project is to extract uh, lab values from a clinical document if we are given knowledge that a lab test exists. So if we know that a lab test was done and that it is present in the clinical text, we want to extract the uh, lab value associated with it. And so the question we derive from this is whether SEM and rule-based approaches, which are two, two approaches to the problems that uh, have been discussed in uh, relation extraction research, uh, whether they are applicable to uh, lab value extraction and can be done so uh, with similar results in terms of performance. And you may ask why we would be interested in extracting lab result values. Uh, one potential application is it's very useful for research. Uh, one of the biggest bottlenecks in terms of research time is cohort identification, where you want to identify a set of uh, applicable patients that are applicable to what you want to research. Uh, so having lab values would be useful because you would be able to search for, for a set of patients with a certain, uh, certain set of uh, lab values, and uh, you can then automatically use that to search and generate a cohort to perform your research on, rather than having to manually go through an entire patient database and pick out the ones that are applicable to you. Uh, secondarily, it's also useful for studies on test sensitivity and specificity, so you could, for instance, uh, look for a set of patients with a certain abnormal test result and then compare to whether or not they actually had, um, whether or not they actually had were diagnosed with the condition that a test is supposed to look for. Um, and from that, you can determine uh, how good the test actually is in the practical context. And finally, a third use would be big data analysis, where, for instance, you could look for a set of patients that were diagnosed with a certain condition, and you could then uh, analyze their lab results to try and identify outliers and 
abnorm abnormalities. Sorry. <laughs> um, uh, beyond just research applications, they are also useful. It, this would also be useful for practical applications. So, for instance, uh, automated clinical decision support. Uh, right now, it uses uh, structured structured lab values that were manually input to help support uh, clinician decisions. But, for instance, uh, in the case of unstructured text, so unstructured records that were converted from paper, uh, usually this is just OCR and uh, it's just raw text. So the CDS system cannot understand. Uh, and as such, it doesn't use those past lab values unless it has been manually converted and input into the software. So being able to auto autonomously extract this information would actually reduce a great deal of overhead, um, which uh, as a more general statement, this would also uh, increase backwards compatibility with uh, older text records because uh, one of the greatest overheads to conversion to semi-structured electronic health records is actually filling out those uh, structures with data and oftentimes you will have to manually go through records and uh, input them and being able to autonomously fill more of them would greatly reduce the overhead of uh, the conversion task. So for this project we plan on using uh, building off of two primary other works. Uh, for one we don't plan on implementing a natural language processing engine from scratch. Uh, it takes far too much time and quite frankly I don't have the expertise to do so. Um, Instead, we will be using the clinical text analysis and extraction system, which is an open source uh, natural language processing engine that was specifically tailored to uh, extract components that are relevant to the clinical do domain. Um, and we plan on using these components that they extract to support our uh, implementation of a lab value extractor. Uh, it's quite important to note that as of right now, CTEX does not have the ability to extract uh, lab value pairs and lab result lab value pairs. So, uh, being able to add this uh, this support would be a useful contribution to the community in general. Uh, for our record set that we plan on performing NLP on, we will be using the I2P2 data sets. Uh, so I2P2 I2B2 holds a yearly national language processing challenge that uh, challenges people to extract certain semantic features from clinical text. This, these specific uh, semantic features differ from year to year. but uh, the most important point is at the end of the task, they released a generated data set with uh, all of the annotations that they were looking for over that challenge uh, input and present. And for our purposes, of particular use is the 2010 ITBD challenge because it contains information on uh, lab tests as part of its concept and relation identification challenge. And you'll know earlier, uh, the problem I presented was if we are told that there is a certain set of lab results, we want to extract the values that are associated with them. Um, so this, this is the, uh, this data set would actually give us the lab results that we want to be given first in order to extract the relevant values. As far as implementation goes, uh, the, the task we are facing is twofold. First, we must uh, perform name, name entity recognition on the, uh, on to extract lab values and then we must uh, relate them back to the lab result annotation itself. So name entity recognition, there's multiple approaches that have been discussed in uh, literature, several of which include dictionary lookup, role-based approaches, and uh, machine learning approaches. Uh, a prior study done on uh, lab value extraction in slightly different circumstances by Kang et al. suggests that uh, role-based approaches might perform the best for lab value extraction specifically. So we will be uh, using an adaptation of this to in our uh, own uh, lab value name and theory recognition. For relation extraction, uh, there's also several different approaches. Again, rule-based hand-built patterns, um, unsupervised learning, supervised learning, which is what we plan on doing in our project here. So for, for implementation, uh, there will be three phases. First, we plan on manually creating a gold standard. So we have a manual annotation phase where we go through the 2010 data set and uh, manually annotate the correct lab values and the relation that, uh, that associates the lab value with the lab result annotation. And uh, plan on implementing this as a CTEX component that just iterates through the data set and queries the user for the correct uh, values to input if it is present. And once we have created this gold center, we can use it for evaluation purposes later on in the project. 
after this phase, we plan on doing uh, automated extraction, which is uh, the bulk of the project. Um, so we want to do the first, uh, the same, same task as the first manual annotation component, but we want it to be done autonomously. And so, uh, again, the task is twofold. First, we want to extract all the possible lab values within the document. So we want to identify and uh, create annotations for what we believe are lab values. And then we want to uh, relate them back to the, we want to determine whether uh, extracted value is actually related to a given lab result. And I'll provide more examples of this uh, later on in this presentation. And finally, we want to perform evaluation where uh, we compare our extracted annotations with the uh, randomly created gold standard to uh, evaluate precision recall and F1 score. So as a general overview of what the task we seek to do is, uh, so let's say we had a segment of text that said had a hematocrit level of 35%. We are given, as highlighted in blue here, a lab annotation that says uh, this is a hematocrit lab, uh, lab test that has uh, UML's uh, test unique identifier, or type unique, unique identifier of uh, P34, which is laboratory procedure and test results. Um, and what we seek to do is uh, identify the items highlighted in green here. So first we want to extract the 35%. Uh, want to identify that this is a lab value that has a value of 35 and a unit of percent. And then we want to associate it back to the lab annotation itself. So the first task, task we do is then to extract all of the lab values present in the text. So for this uh, example segment here, on patients on the 15th of January who had a hemoglobin and hematocrit of 16 grams per deciliter and 35% respectively. Our task is twofold. First, we want to extract, uh, extract all of the correct lab values, so 16 grams per deciliter and 35%, but we don't want to extract other unrelated numerical values, such as 15th of January, which isn't a lab, lab value, for instance. And the approach we are planning on take, taking to this is a role-based uh, approach. So. We ant anticipate during the manual annotation phase, we will uh, notice several prevalent p patterns in terms of how, uh, how lab tests are written and their respective results. Uh, and this may differ depending on the specific section of text. So for instance, uh, lab, lab results written inside the uh, personal medical history will differ significantly. It will be more narrative style as opposed to, for instance, observations, which would be more bullet point. This is the test, this is the result, for instance. So the pattern we may use may di differ depending on the specific, specific section of text. Um, and then other factors that we plan on using include the presence of a numeric value in and of itself, the presence of a unit of measure, which is actually a finite, although very large set, um, and the distance between the numerical value and the units of measure. So if, for instance, a perspective numeric value and the unit of measure is 10 words apart, it's very likely not an actual lab value, right? Um, and the distance between the uh, a perspective, the closest lab result annotation and the, what we believe may be a uh, lab value. If they're very far apart, again, it's highly unlikely that this is a lab value. Okay, so once this is done, we have a set of uh, lab values, but then we must then re relate them back to the lab results in and of themselves. So for instance, uh, in that previous text segment I showed you, we had two labs done. We had the hematocrit and hemoglobin. Um, but we don't know which one of the, the two 16 grams of deciliter and 35% is associated with which. And that is our next task is we must determine whether each pair, pairing of uh, lab value and lab is actually, whether or not they're actually related to each other. And to accomplish this, we will be using supervised learning. Uh, we'll be using an approach called the support vector machine, which is essentially a classifier that determines whether each possible pair of lab result and lab value is uh, within our, a given document is actually related to each other. Uh, and we'll be using various features to support the support vector machine uh, that is given to us through CTAKs, uh, such as type of speech, uh, the terms and tokens, the distance between the two, the UMLS concept ID for the lab result, the uh, dependency tree, and text sections and word embedding. So once this is done, we must then perform evaluation to determine how well our uh, automated extraction performed. So uh, support vector machines are a supervised learning approach. So what that means is they must be fed uh, test data first in order to actually be able to perform, or training data first in order to be actually be able to perform well. 
So to accomplish this, we plan on using the one, one out cross validation. What that means is uh, when we are evaluating a document on an unannotated document, we plan on using the remaining documents within the record set to train uh, to train the uh, SVM on the golden standard. And once that is, do that is done, we perform evaluation. So for purposes of this uh, study, we d define a hit, a positive hit, as a numeric value that is correctly associated with the relevant lab result annotation. Um, most importantly, we allow for some discrepancy in un unit identification. So uh, we use units to help support our, uh, our lab value name entity recognition, but uh, it is not the goal of this study to build a comprehensive uh, unit dictionary. So, so we allow for some discrepancies there. And once that is done, we just compare our generated results against the gold standard using the uh, definition for hit as uh, outlined above to evaluate true positive, false positive, false negative. And then we can, from there, determine precision recall in the F1 score. And several limitations in this project. For one, name entity recognition of lab results is outside the scope of this project. So um, we only seek to define lab values, extract lab values, and their relation back to lab results. Uh, but in a practical context, lab results uh, must be extracted as well because a lab value in and of itself, 35%, doesn't mean anything unless it's associated with a hematocrit lab, for instance. Uh, what that means is in a, in a practical application, we can only ever perform as well as the uh, lab result annotator. So even if we get perfect extraction from ours, which is, for one, highly unlikely, but even then, uh, if our if the lab result annotation is separate, only performs at like 60%, uh, then uh, overall the entire workflow will only perform at 60%. So the, we're constrained by that step. Uh, second major limitation is in terms of uh, the data structure we use for storing lab results. So you'll note that uh, we only identify numeric values, but beyond that, uh, some lab tests have special representations, for instance, uh, probably of very common one is blood pressure, for instance, has uh, two numeric values, and they're all relevant. And uh, it cannot be represented well in the data structure we use because, for instance, there's no unit associated with it. Oh, I mean, there is, but usually it's not written. Um, and beyond that, we also have uh, comparative statements which are not supported. So, for instance, uh, if someone were to say hematocrit level of less than 35%, uh, our extractor would associate 35% with hematocrit, but it would not uh, it would not grab the less than part. So it would just say hematocrit is 35%. Uh, we anticipate being able to contribute several things to back to research community in general. Uh, the first of which would be the annotation uh, annotated data sets that we produce during the manual annotation phase. Um, so this would have all the lab values and relations to the lab results uh, included within the data set. And secondly, we plan on producing a CTAX component capable of uh, performing this lab value extraction and association autonomously, uh, which we plan on eventually releasing onto GitHub to for contribution back to the open source community. Uh, we don't know how well this will perform yet. Ideally, we want it to perform well. So for that, we define this as a F F1 score of greater than 0.65, which is a score selected due to uh, it being similar to the performance on other similar relation extraction tasks. And for future ex extensions of this work, as was noted before, we're constrained by uh, extended name link entry recognition for lab results. So expanding uh, performance of this, improving it, will also uh, improve the performance of our, our task in the overall workflow in practical applications. Uh, Furthermore, it is important to note that the SVM and rule-based approach is one of many possible approaches to uh, live value extraction. Um, and this is one that we selected uh, both due to personal preference and because uh, of uh, studies that uh, suggest that this may be the best approach to take, but we don't know that for sure. It may be uh, better, an alternative approach may perform better. It might be worthwhile investigation. Um, and finally, uh, extensions on supported lab result types and representations, for instance, uh, being able to support the, those special lab results as mentioned before, as well as comparative statements. And with that, I thank you for your time. Any questions?
So yeah, I have a um, um, interesting work and important. Um, uh, it might be beyond the scope, but what about time? Because you, um, do you are you taking time into account? Because it's different if a medical record says, you know, five years ago Mr. Jones had a hematocrit of 26 versus, you know, saying, you know, he came into the clinic today and we ordered a, a test yeah. and his hematocrit was 26. Uh, the, this, this project in and of itself would not actually do that. It would be a useful for future, uh, future expansion. But uh, right now we're only interested in extracting the lab value and associated back to the lab results, which I mean, th that, would still be, uh, that would still be applicable here. You just want to add an additional annotation that says this was several years ago as opposed to this was just now. But just because, you know, sometimes values change, you know, like if right. he had an acute bleeding episode, you know, he, you know, he was in the hospital recently and his hematocrit, you know, had right. a big right. bleed, his hematocrit fell down to 20, you know, and then right. he right. was transfused and he got better and here he is back in the clinic and it's 36, so. Right. If I can chime in, that sort of temporal relationship thing is like a huge ongoing medical NLP thing and one, one nice thing about this project is, is the data set that he's going to produce would be a really useful first step for that data set as it starts to develop. Um, it would be a really good starting point uh, for any potential kinds of features that you would think about. The ones that from his annotations are exactly the ones that you would want, that you would depend on as part of any kind of temporal relationship classifier. So um, that's like a really nice logical extension. So, uh, in the context of the data structure that I plan to implement, uh, there you can you can write special case rules that extract them uh, into a certain format. For instance, uh, blood pressure, you would just uh, have a special rule that says this is what blood pressure looks like. The first number, second number is solid, solid, and you would implement that as two separate lab values that would uh, then both be related back to the lab, lab result annotation. Uh, a future expansion of this work again would be possibly to write a more abstract uh, data representation that would be able to support the, all of these different special cases out of the box. Uh, because right now, again, you have to write special case rules to actually add support for these. And maybe you said earlier, are there, are there certain types of lab values that you're focusing on? And you gave the example of hematocrit, but I mean, is there you know, uh, a certain group of lab values that are particularly important? And, and we seek to, this seeks to, we seek to be a general lab value extractor, but uh, right now a limitation would be uh, we, ha we, we are only extracting numeric values with units, for instance. <laughs> I'm not complaining, for the record. <laughs> what, what is your timeline for your project? That is up for discussion. I think uh, I, I've already done a good portion of the work related to this, so I think it could be a bit faster than uh, expected, but I'm aiming for uh, two months or so maybe, which may seem slightly accelerated, but again, I've done a good portion of this work already, so. Yep. Uh, a nice presentation, the one suggestion I have when we get to your write-up, uh -huh. I would go ahead and put the equations in yeah. Everything. Okay. Um, and definitions. So anytime you use, like, I think you use the SVM very right, clearly. Right. Um, I think we can all figure out what you're doing from these, this talk, but you're at some point going to be writing up a formal right, right. report. So I would just be really careful to define everything and put in all the equations so that right. it's complete. Right. Thank yeah. you for the advice. It's easier to, it's just easier to follow. Yeah. <laughs> I have that problem all the time, so it's good to be reminded of that. So you 
mentioned about, you talked a little bit in your pre-meeting, but a little more about what you plan to do with the results, both about how to disseminate them or right. um, just because this isn't my field as much. So, so uh, <laughs> the process would be twofold. So first, we will want to release the source on GitHub for evaluation. Um, and then after that, we will want to submit a pull request to the main CTAKE project in and of itself. Uh, for inclusion into the CTAX project as a, its own component, assuming like, we get adequate performance. So performance that isn't terrible, for instance, uh, we w then want to ask CTAX to include our component back in their uh, project so that it gets distributed automatically to everyone that uses CTAX. To an extent, so uh, evaluation would be, we perform our own, own evaluation to determine performance, but uh, people would then evaluate, uh, when they when we submit a pull request to CTAX, they would then want to determine for themselves whether or not uh, it is worthwhile for inclusion. Because for instance, anyone can just go up to them and say, hey, I have this thing that performs 99% of the time, right? But I mean, no one's gonna trust that, they're gonna want to cross verify for themselves, so. And, and actually, GitHub is really more of a repository. Right. Than, okay, uh, that's what I was it, saying. It's not like an right. application that's sitting there um, running, but people can go to GitHub and download mm -hmm. it and compile it and run it. Thank you. Repeat that. Thank you. Oh, so I'm just trying to figure out how you, the flow of dissemination for these types of projects. So, would you sort of publish it somehow before you right. put it up? So, uh, ideally, I think the process that would we would first publish uh, what our method was what? for implementation, and okay. then our, our results, and then we would also publish the source alongside it. And then uh, when we submit the pull request to CTAX, so when we ask them to include our uh, component inside their main project, we would then uh, include the information that we uh, published about uh, methods and uh, scoring. And then they could evaluate for themselves whether or not uh, what we said was actually true. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps. <laughs> I mean, anyone can publish to GitHub. Like, I, out of habit, like out of habit, my 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 stuff is always on GitHub, uh, even before I publish anything. But. Uh, The data is under the use agreement. Which One reason for using ICD today is that it's a data set that other people in the field are likely to know about and be able to ask you know, whether it's really even worth the clinical corpus with such a large amount of data. So I think it's about the same. So one more question. So you mentioned that you're looking for a certain level of accuracy. Would you say what what you're looking for? 
so I'm looking for an F1 score, which is a combined metric that combines pre precision and recall into, uh, I'm looking for one of 0.65 uh, or above. Okay. But obviously higher is better, but uh, for similar relation extraction tasks, uh, the performance usually hovers around there, so okay. that was what we selected. Okay. I did see that 0.65 that I read, so that's your, so if you hit that, then you're done, or? No, well, I mean, obviously we want higher, better performance, like, it, it would be stellar if it's like 0.99, for instance, but, <laughs> uh, but that's not always possible, like, for a lot of published papers, it's, uh, for relation extraction, so that, I mean, I'm just using that as a baseline for it. Th this is when we get acceptable results for it in terms of performance that's... You refine until you get there. Right, right. Performance that's on par with uh, okay. other, other relation extraction tasks. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs>